mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to another live edition of Ask Huda. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All praises due to Allah alone. We praise the man we seek his help. Whomsoever Allah guides is the truly guided one. And whomsoever Allah leads us say, none can show him guidance. May the greatest peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear viewers, all our phone numbers should appear on the bottom of your screen. If you have any questions, please dial any of these numbers. We'll connect to you right away in the same order that your call was received. We have some callers on the line. Qasim from Pakistan is the first caller for the day. Assalamu alaikum, Qasim. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sheikh. Uh, I will make it precise and quick. Uh, my uh, wife called yesterday from UK, uh, her name's Aisha, and uh, she explained some situation, and you asked uh, her, you know, if the husband can call, explain the situation, it was about the divorce, so that's pretty much it, I was, I'm, I'm calling about, if you have any questions for me specifically, you want me to explain something, I can definitely do that. You're the one who's having the question, go ahead and tell me what happened. Yes, I. What happened was, um, she said a few very uh, rude and uh, very nasty things to me, and uh, which were not, which she should not have. And I was, uh, I, I got enraged, and and it was not just rage or or, or uh, something. I I cannot explain it, but I mean, I was very very much angry very angry like crazy level hang angry i just want i i couldn't have control over myself i was so fuming with rage that i just lost control of myself i'm not a kind of person who would go to that level i mean it has never happened before that i had gone to that level uh if given a chance you know uh, if i can go back in time i'm i'm pretty sure in my intent was not that I was I would never do that you know I mean I'm not lying here to you is I okay. explain you everything thank you Th it's thank true. you Qasim stay on the line please with regards to the last remark that you made if I can go back with the time I wouldn't have said it uh, almost all divorces and business transactions when they fail people would say I wish the time will go back so that doesn't count what really counts is two things that you've mentioned. That I lost control, I didn't know what I was saying, and I never intended to divorce. The Prophet ﷺ said, divorce while the person is extremely enraged and angry to the extent that he doesn't know what he's saying, doesn't count. So if that was your condition, that divorce doesn't count. And yesterday, I believe, I told your wife that what if Allah made divorce four times, five times, or six times? Would you still drive him angry and uh, drive him out of his control to say the divorce again? Because people have chances. Allah said, At-talaqu marratan. The first and the second divorces are revocable, and the third is irrevocable. But people insist on wasting all these opportunities and also wasting the time of the shiuch, asking them one after another, I didn't mean it, it wasn't my intention. So my answer to you right now is based on your narrative, is based on your story, that you were extremely enraged, you didn't know what you're saying, you lost control in this case and you never intended to divorce. In this case, divorce does not count according to what you say. Barakallahu feekum. May Allah bless you, Qasim, and thank you for verifying your condition. Uh, before I take another call, I would like to bring to the attention of all the viewers, we should take an example. 
and we learn lessons from others. All this stuff. <clears throat> we sometimes think I'm going to test my husband's tolerance or how much he loves me. Uh, maybe because you are having some kids, you think that he's not going to divorce you. But you keep, you keep pushing him to the edge, divorce me, divorce me, divorce me. And when he divorces you, you cry and you say, how dare you divorce me? I only did what you wanted. This is really strange. But it is not strange with those who deal with some women who have this attitude. Not all women are the same. Likewise, not all men are the same. So may Allah the Almighty guide us, all of us, to what is best. And every sister should take an example and learn a lesson from these incidents. And every man who keeps his family together and fears that he will fall apart, do not be enraged. Do not lose control when it comes to the matter of divorce. Only whenever you're serious about divorcing your wife, say you're divorced. Otherwise, leave off your mouth, leave the flat, leave the house. Do not be in the same place where anger is uh, on fire. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Abdullah from Germany, welcome to Ask with Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum. Um, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go I on. stopped music. When I stopped listening to music, what happened was I found very much khushur in salat and I found very much sakinah. So I was a very happy person and this went on for a while and uh, this went on and on and on until one incident. Um, so at that time, I didn't know that much about Islam uh, and uh, what and my what so what my father did, he was going to the bank and he had a um, well he had a bag with him and I didn't know what what in what was in that bag and I thought it was haram to carry it because it may be debit cards or credit cards and he is not the best person so I I, I thought it was haram and I feared him and. What I did, I still carried it. And maybe it wasn't even sinful because the day before he beat me, so he may say I was forced. So this thing, it may not even be sinful, but so I did. So I first carried it, and then he wanted me to carry it again. I refused, and then he beat me up. And like, since this time he beat me, this was like one year ago, I had was was I had, um, I have, I didn't have khushu in salat. It, uh, things got much worse. So I didn't, I don't know. What was it? Maybe you can advise me. So like this. First of all, Abdullah, I'm glad you quit music. And I'm glad you're sharing with us that, mashallah, it helped you a great deal gaining khushu' in salah. This is a message for all the viewers. Secondly, I would never speak ill about my parents, neither in public nor in private, no matter what they do. So I wouldn't say a bad word about my parents. I wouldn't say they are not the best people. Rather, I always say, may Allah bless them. May Allah grant them all the best, good life, etc. Thirdly, uh, you assume that carrying a bag which have credit cards and debit cards is haram. That is not haram. What is haram with carrying a bag that have debit cards? What is haram if the person, the credit card itself is needed and it is the way you use it which will determine whether it is haram or halal. When a person signed up with the bank that I needed the credit card in order to book my airplane tickets, book, uh, rent a car, do certain things which cannot be accessed via the debit card, and then I link to my account. So there is a direct withdrawal. Once I make a charge, it is taken automatically from my bank account in order to settle the payment. So not a chance that I will pay interest. So you assume it is haram. And if I were you, I would have carried my dad's bag and I would have carried his shoes as well on top of my head. So uh, we totally oppose and what again is beating. So what the father did beating you, this is not approved. But it doesn't give you a reason to criticize him or uh, to say bad about him. Maybe you need 
not now uh, a fatwa for Mashir, but you definitely need to visit a psychologist and tell him or her, share with them your uh, mental condition and what kind of effect and impact uh, that incident have left uh, on you in order to assist you with the recovery. May Allah bless you and your family, Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sister Sumaya from the UK, welcome to Ask with us, Sumaya. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Um, I would like to ask you, um, I'm a revert, alhamdulillah. So um, I've met so many Christians that they say like, um, I've prayed for something, like I made dua for something in the name of Jesus. So I got it. So like they asking sometimes, how is this possible if your religion is the true, uh, you know, how it comes that my prayers are answered? if I pray in the name of um, somebody else and not in, like, in our God, in Allah. So what would you say to these people who are speaking like this? What would you Sumaya, answer to them? So, so Maya, uh, mashallah, thank you for calling in. I want to find out, when did you accept Islam, Sumaya? Um, around three years ago, uh, alhamdulillah. And how did you choose this beautiful name? Um, I just like it, and I decided to change my name. Okay. Because I would like to be, um, you know, when someone hear my name, I want to be like a Muslim and not like uh, from another religion. May Allah bless you, Sumaya. Very proud of you. Look, the Almighty Allah, who is the only one who is worthy of worship, has informed us in the Quran and in the original Torah and the original gospel, that if we want anything, we should invoke him alone. And he has commanded, لا تدعو مع الله أحد. You should never invoke others with the Almighty Allah. We as Muslims believe that Jesus, peace be upon him, was a revered prophet whom we love, we revere, and we say, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, like the rest of the prophets like Muhammad, peace be upon him. We as Muslims, we never invoke Muhammad, even though we love him dearly. We love him more than we love our own. But we don't invoke him because we know that he's just a human being. Allah is the one who created him and we should invoke him because he used to invoke him. We don't invoke Jesus even though we love him and revere him because we know that he's just a human being. Allah is the one who created him and commissioned him with the prophethood. When somebody says, oh Allah, I want to get this car, and uh, he gets it, it could be simply as a result of his or her prayer, or as a result of that was preordained for them. So if any person invoked a stone or a rock or a piece of wood carved as a cross and asked that piece of wood to cure me, I was having COVID, and as a piece of wood to cure me, and the person was cured, would the same person say, oh, wow, when I prayed to that stone, when I prayed to that penny, which have an angel in carved in it, it answered my prayer. No, that is not true at all. It just happened to coincide that God has preordained you or he or she will get this particular thing at this particular time, whether a cure or a car or a gain or protection against the harm. So, but in the mind of the person, he would assume it is a blessing of invoking the cross or the stone or the angel or Jesus or even Muhammad. That is not true. We were commanded not to worship other than Allah. We were commanded. <clears throat> وقال ربكم ادعوني استجب لكم ان الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخرين My Lord said ادعوني invoke me alone supplicate to me alone ask from me alone I shall answer your supplication Indeed those who turn away from me and they do not ask from me 
shall be admitted to hellfire while being humiliated. The Almighty Allah also, that's in Surah Al-Ghafir, while in Surah Al-Baqarah, second chapter of the Quran, Allah has informed us that we are, He is very near to us. If you want to communicate with Him, you don't have to scream or cry out loud. فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُوا لِي وَلْيُؤْمِنُوا بِي لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْشُدُونَ I am near to my servants, so let them respond to me. Do what I commanded them to do of worshipping me alone, of invoking him alone, in order to be rightly guided. Thank you, Sumayya. From the UK, and may Allah keep you steadfast. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mistake, brother Abdul Qadir from Ghana, Accra. Assalamu alaikum, Abdul Qadir. Hello. I hear you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How can I help you, Abdul Qadir? MashaAllah, I'm having a question uh, regarding uh, killing of rectus or insects in the room. Uh, and my uh, question what was is that, that again? Is it, good, is it advisable to poison and kill them or? I didn't get your knowledge. question, Abdul Qadir. Can you say that again, please? Question regarding killing of insects or reptiles in the room. Yeah. So is it advisable or is having a rule on in Islam? Yeah, it's permissible to kill the insects which are harmful. You don't kill them. You're afraid that they will harm you or your family members or cause damage to the house. Kill them. That is permissible. Thank you, Abdul Qadir from Ghana. But the way you kill them, we should understand that some people use fire. This is absolutely forbidden. So spraying insecticides, it's permissible though. Barakallah feek. And my dear viewers, I think it is time to take a short break. And inshallah, we'll be back in a few minutes. Those of you are already on the phone line, we'll see you inshallah at the other end in a couple of minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the second segment of today's Ask Huda program live all the way from Abuja. We have Sister Fatima from Pakistan on the line. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Fatima, assalamu alaikum. If if Sister Fatima can hear us, maybe we can take another caller. Well, let's take Sister Khadija from Nigeria. Though, Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You live on Asuda. How can I help you, Khadija? Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh, I have two questions. My Please first go question ahead. I'm is: listening. Will I? Okay, sir. Will I be sinful if I use the office printer to print something that is personal to me by using my own plain sheets? That's my well, first question. Well, what about, the, what about the ink? What about the printer itself? What about uh, the usage of electricity? The facility, what mm. if your manager walked in while you're printing something completely personal, has nothing to do with work? Will he be okay with that? What about the business owner? If he realizes that you're using the work uh, facility to do some personal work, would that be okay with them? Obviously not. So uh, the act or the contract that you have signed then to serve the firm that you're working for, whether it's a, a public sector or a private sector. So no, do not use the work printer or printing any personal <clears throat> uh, papers or documents, even if you're using your own blank sheet. Your second question, please, Khadija. 
My second question is, if we boycott the products from the Zionists, what happened to the Muslims working in such companies? Well, that's a very good question. But first of all, let me ask you, which state are you calling from? I'm calling from a state near Lagos, which is a Quara. Okay. May Allah make it easy for you. We were in Lagos just two days ago. So uh, what will happen, uh, first of all, is boycotting the products of the enemies. The products which the revenue of selling such products or services, the enemies used to support their armies to kill Muslims. Is it something recommended to boycott? What do you think? If you know that the supermarket next door kicked your sister out of the supermarket and said, never set a foot here before, and they accused them of whatever, would you ever go to the same supermarket and buy anything from them? Would you pick up the phone and order from them? Rather, I would say, by God, I would never give you a penny. Not only that, I would utilize all resources, social media, family circle, friend circle, to propagate the message and to circulate the word. Don't you guys ever buy from this evil guy, the owner of the supermarket, because he beat my sister, he kicked her out of the supermarket. You are going to do all of that, correct? Are you going to think about, oh, what will happen to the economy? What will happen to the salespeople? It will not be affected. You are not going to find them because there are other people who are still non-Muslims buying from them and benefiting from them. But me, out of honor, out of honor, out of support to my family members, because those brothers and sisters are our family members. Allah said, this ummah of yours is one single united ummah. I'm your Lord, so fear me. So, of course, it is our duty not to give a penny to anyone who brags about supporting the armies of killing the babies. The armies that kill our family members, our brothers and sisters. No doubt, this is something that we all can do and we should do. Thank you, Sister Khadija. By that, we answered two of your questions. Let's take another caller. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdullah from Ethiopia, welcome to Ask with Abdullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Abdullah. How can I help you? Uh, I am from Ethiopia. My question is. Uh... Uh, in our country, it is uh, in, uh, a popular word that uh, said uh, when uh, uh, you ask someone, uh, it said uh, by your mother, give me that thing by your mother or something like this. Is this word uh, haram or uh, included to shirk? Uh, describe well, you, to me. You mean, you mean it's like you're swearing to your mother? to the honor of your mother or to the life of your mother, correct? I ask you by my not mother to, to give me this. Is this what oh, you're asking about? Oh, no. Swearing, but uh, when you're asking something, give me by your mother. Well, swearing here doesn't mean the swearing of insulting or saying bad words. Swearing as an oath. Like, you know, when you say, I swear to Allah. So some people would say, I swear to the life of my mother. I swear to the life of my children. Is this what you mean? Okay. Is this what you mean? Uh, uh, no, not a swearing. For example, when uh, I asking him something, uh, it's uh, like saying, uh, give me that thing uh, by your mother, by asking that's by called, mother. That's, that is called an oath. Like when you say, Billahi, by Allah, by my mother. Okay? Mm. 
So if you say as an oath, swearing to any other than the Almighty Allah, including your mother or your children or whatever valuable, that is not permissible. Because the Prophet said, Man kana halifan, falyahlif billahi awliyasun. Whoever is in need to make an oath, to swear to say, Wallahi for innocence. Billahi, I swear to Allah. You should only swear to Allah or his names or be quiet. So taking an oath in the name of the loved ones, including the parents, is not permissible. And whoever takes an oath other than Allah, this is an act of shirk. The person is required to repent and say, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Fuad from Doha, Qatar. Assalamu alaikum. How can I help you? Assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So, Sheikh, the Ministry of Religious Affairs of our country deals with Islam as well as other religions, meaning people of different religions live here, such as Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity. In such a situation, will it be permissible to join the job as a computer data entry operator there, since there is work on other religions as well as Islam? Well, for Ad, to be honest with you, I didn't really understand what you mean. Uh, other religions are working in the same company. So what is wrong with that? Sheikh, actually, I was from Bangladesh, not Qatar. For Ad? Yes, Sheikh. I was from Bangladesh, Fuad? Sheikh. Maybe you can try again. Maybe you can try again, but anyway, in general, can I work in a company which have people belong to other religions? Of course, yes. What is not permissible is to work in something which is not permissible. Or you produce or you sell something which is not permissible. But if your co-workers are non-Muslims, if your employer is non-Muslim, so what? There is nothing wrong with that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Shazia from the USA. Sister Shazia, you're live on Ask Buddha. How can I help you? Hello, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sister Shazia. Sheikh, I have two questions, but before that, I always used to call and to watch the video later on the Facebook, but now you don't. Uh, Put on the Facebook so I can't listen to the video later on. Uh, well, same video. Actually, it is. You have actually, we're live right now. We're live on all social media platforms, whether the Facebook page, my page, Koda TV page, or the YouTube channel. So, how are you watching the program right now? Are you able to view the program? On the Facebook, yes. Okay, so what is the question then? Okay, so the my question is, uh, is it? How uh, see uh, like um, if one is pause in uh, in a state of vadu and the another is uh, one like uh, without garment, that does it uh, make vadu uh, uh, invalid? Well, unfortunately, your connection is really poor. I was unable to hear the question. Can you say that again? Shazia, make sure you're using your yeah. handset, please. Yeah, I am using it. Uh, okay. Yeah, what so is the I'm saying, again, if, is it allowed to be, hello? Go is, ahead. Is it allowed to be organ donor? Okay, the question is, is it allowed to be an organ donor? Yes, it is allowed, provided. This is after death. And I would specify that to whom? I mean, I wanted my body part, whether the heart, the lung, the spleen, the liver, the kidneys, 
to be in the body of a believer. You understand? So the question in general, is organ donation permissible? Yes, it is permissible in one of two conditions. If the person is alive and he has of the same organ two, which he can survive with one, and the special state you will be perfectly surviving, and the receiver will survive, you will be highly rewarded. Because Allah Almighty says in Surah Al-Ma'ilah, chapter number 5, وَمَنْ أَحْيَاهَا فَكَأَنَّمَا أَحْيَا النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا Whoever saves the life of a single human being, it is rewarded as if he had saved the lives of all human beings. After death, the problem with after death, some hospitals would rush to declare that the person dead in order to extract their body parts because there is a long queue and waiting list. So there's something need to be looked into, okay? In many cases, the person is on life support and he may survive, but they declare him dead in order to rush extracting some of the body organs to save the life of others. So we have to be careful with that. Also, it is called donation. There is no compensation whatsoever. So other than the reward, obviously. So inshallah, we're gonna take a short break and we'll be back in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back to the third segment in today's Ask Huda live all the way from Abuja. We have Sagar from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum, Sagar. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, Sagar. I have a few questions. I hope that won't be too long. First question is that uh, uh, a guy delivers chicken at our home. So once he was, uh, he came to the house and he was wearing some strings in his hands. So uh, is it is the chicken halal because he was wearing some strings? Oh, he was wearing a string in his hand. This is the delivery guy. If the chicken were. Yeah, yeah. Slaughtered. If the chicken were slaughtered by Muslims in Pakistan, Alhamdulillah, it is halal. You don't worry about the delivery guy though. And when somebody is wearing a string in his hand, and you know, we know that the Prophet said, Man faqad ashrak. That's another thing. That if you wear uh, anything uh, in your neck, in your hand, with the intention of wearing an amulet or talisman, this is an act of shirk. But it doesn't make the person completely non-Muslim. You understand? There are a lot of people who are unaware of that. They pray the five daily prayers. They come to the masjid and they wear in ta'weed and talisman. There are doctors, highly educated people who are wearing ta'weed. Why? Because their mom, their grandmom, uh, gave it to them and said, you wear this, it will bring you a good luck. So he doesn't know. He did not attend classes. He did not study aqidah. Is he kafir? No, he is not kafir. The act itself is not permissible. But when a person is saying the shahada and is praying and is unaware of the hukm, it's not kafir. The person becomes a mushrik when he knows that hanging something from his neck, wearing a string in his hand, with the intention of wearing it as a talisman or ta'weez or for protection, is an act of shirk and he still insists. So there is nothing wrong with you consuming the chicken which is delivered to you by this guy. He's not the one who slaughtered it though. Thank you, Sagar from Pakistan. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Karim from Ghana. Assalamu alaikum. Go ahead, Abdul Karim. No. Okay, how Sheikh. can I help you? How are you? Doing good, alhamdulillah. Okay. Sheikh, I'm May Allah reward you for your great work. Allahumma Israel Allah. and the Thank you so much. Thank you. Please, um, I've seen that Allah always answers my prayer. Some time ago, 
I thought that my I was supposed to be sacked in school because of school fees, but by the grace of Allah, I didn't even know how <clears throat> I paid the fees. It came as a miracle or who. So I don't know how to be thankful to Allah. So how can I be thankful to Allah? For he has been answering my du'as. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? No. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah, basically when you were saying that you were at a school and you and you made dua, your voice was breaking up. So what do you mean that school, tuitions, dua, if you can uh, brief me with your question again, I will appreciate it. Okay, I am saying... Uh, I made dua and my fees was paid. I don't. I don't even know how it was on by an unknown person. Okay, thank you. So I'm asking how so can I be? He's he, he's um, saying that he made dua. He prayed to Allah and the tuitions or his school fees were paid. He doesn't know who paid them. Well, I wouldn't bother much. As long as I made dua and Allah answered my dua. If the person who paid your tuition wanted to be visible, wanted to be known to you, you would have come forward. Okay? If he requested the school administration not to reveal his identity, accept it as a gift. Especially you are in need. And especially you have been praying and you invoke the Almighty, make it easy for me, enable me to pay the fees, the tuition. We gotta read the Qur'an and ponder over its verses. In Surah Al-Talaq, there is one verse in which the Almighty Allah says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Which means whoever fears Allah, whoever keeps his or her duty to Allah, Allah will deliver them out of their hardship out of their tough times and will provide for them for means which they could not imagine nor anticipate. So this is a blessing from Allah and if the person who paid the tuitions on your behalf didn't want to be recognized, leave it this way. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Estate Tabshir, all the way from India. Assalamu alaikum Tabshir. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Uh, uh, my question is that uh, I follow Shafi school of thought and uh, not a uh, fully finished read figure. Like uh, I'm going to Madrasa and studying Shafi figure itself. And my question is uh, in term of uh, breaking of Uzu, uh, should I follow Shafi's mother of thought or uh, like uh, I can follow Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sunnah? Uh, my parents say that uh, when you <laughs> my, go to Hajj, my friend, or, uh, my friend, like my that. friend, my friend, wait yes. a minute. Yes. Now, when you say in front of the viewers, whom some of them are reverts, some of them are new to Islam, and some of them laymen, and some of them are non-Muslims, and when you say I follow Shafi'i, and uh, in 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 terms of wudu, shall I follow the Prophet or Imam Shafi'i? This question itself is really problematic. And it shouldn't be phrased this way. You know what I mean? I would like to be more organized and specific. For instance, if, according to Shafi'i Madhab, if you touch a woman that invalidates your wudu, so is it permissible to kiss my wife or to shake hands with her or with my mahram women? And still maintain wudu, I would say yes. So you ask me, but how come Imam Shafi'i said no? I said because he interpreted the verse of Awla Mastumun Nisa'a as literal, if you touch women, any woman, even your mahram. Well, and how do you understand the verse accordingly? We understand it that Aisha radiallahu anha narrated. The messenger of Allah before going to the masjid after making wudu, he will kiss me and kiss his wives. So kissing one's wife, taking hands with one's wife, hugging one's wife, as long as it is without desire. 
doesn't break the wudu, doesn't invalidate the wudu. Not only that, even though touching a woman who's not mahram is not permissible, and it's a big sin, but it doesn't invalidate the wudu as well. But please, we all, including Imam Shafi'i, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Mali, Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, and Al-Bukhari, Imam Muslim, Imam Abu Sufyan al thawri uh, Ibn al-Arabi, you name them. This program is centered around what the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. So Abu Hanifa, radiyallahu an, received references. He gave his views and made his ishtihad accordingly. Imam Shafi'i have a better access, so he may have different opinions. So we follow what is sound, not the opinion of a person. As a Hanafi, or as a person who's following whatever madhab, when it is confirmed to me that, well, my Imam in this particular opinion was not exactly uh, correct, because at his time he didn't know that there is another hadith, sound hadith. So right away I take the sound hadith. Because they say, those imams have agreed that if you find a sound reference, then it's my madhab. Even if I have a different view or different opinion. Barakallahu feekum. Brothers and sisters, in the remaining couple minutes, don't you forget to pray for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. Ask Allah to support them, to grant them victory to have mercy on their martyrs, to cure those who are injured among them, to return them to their homes, and to make them victorious over their evil enemies. Allahumma ameen, Allahumma ahfadhum bihidhik, Allahumma munzil al-kitab, mujri al-sahab, hazim al-ahzab, ihzim a'da'ana wa zalzilhum, ihzimhum wa zalzil al-arda min tahta aqdamihim, unsur ikhwanana al-mustad'afina fi falastin, انصر إخواننا المستضعفين في غزة على عدوك وعدوهم يا رب العالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين Till next time my dear viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah is my heart speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance And in your deen allow me to advance Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Help me in my quest Permit me to pass the ultimate test Allah is my heart's speech Your mercy is what I beseech Keep in my heart your remembrance